Hello, and welcome to our week on bullying. This week, our focus, as you can see, is bullying. I have a nice little image here to kind of start us off with. Um, as you think about this, think about instances of bullying you may have seen in your own ex schooling experiences, or maybe things you observed while you've been in schools over the past couple of semesters. And think specifically about the harm and negative impact bullying can have. Let's go ahead, we're gonna click on our next slide. I have a little quiz for you, I want you to take. And as we go through each question, I'll give you a second to kind of pick what you would pick as your answer, and then I will tell you the actual answer. So the first quiz question is, which of the following is not a type of bullying? And the options are A, physical bullying, B, verbal bullying, C, relational bullying, D, nonverbal bullying, and E, cyberbullying. So which answer did you pick, A, B, C, D, or E? Well, if you picked D, you would be correct. It is actually non-verbal bullying. The four main types of bullying you'll hear about in schools are the four above, physical, verbal, relational, and cyberbullying. So let's go to our next question. Which of the following is not part of the definition of bullying? Again, we have four options. A, intentionally aggressive behavior. B, repeated over time. C, purpose of saying or doing something to hurt someone once or maybe twice. And D, an imbalance of power. Did you look up those answers, A, B, C, or D? Which one did you pick as being not part of the definition of bullying? If you pick C, you'd be correct. The reason for that is that if it only happens once or twice, it really isn't bullying. Bullying has to be repeated over time, has to be intentionally aggressive, and it has to involve that imbalance of power. Next question. More than one out of every five, or 20.8% of students reported being bullied. Do you think this is true or false? If you selected true, you are correct. One in every five students. Can you think about that number? That number is a lot. So let's go to our next question. The most common place students reported being bullied was A, inside the classroom, B, in the cafeteria, C, outside on school grounds, D, on the school bus, or E, the hallway or stairwell at school. And this is for K through 12, so I know in um, elementary you might think more outside on school playgrounds, but think broad spectrum, where do you think it happens most? If you selected E, the hallway or stairwell at school, you would be correct. That's where most bullying takes place, K through 12. Okay, question five. Students who experience bullying are not at increased risk for A, dropout, B, school, poor school adjustment, C, sleep difficulties, D, anxiety, and E, depression. Which of these do you think is most appropriate? A, B, C, D, or E? Well, if you selected A, you would be correct. They're not at increased risk for dropout initially, particularly because a lot of bullying happens at the younger grade levels. Um, they really can't drop out in elementary school. Maybe later on that might be more of the case, but initially, no, dropout is not one of them. Okay, our last question for our quiz. Which of the following groups had the highest percentage of reported school bullying? We have A, Caucasian, B, African American, C, Hispanic, or D, Asian? So this is like a cultural question, so which culture do you think has the most instances of reported school bullying? If you answered B, you would be correct, as African American had the most cases or instances of reported school bullying. All right, so let's take a closer look at bullying. I want to have you listen to a quick little video here about kids and parents talking about bullying. And as you watch this video, kind of think about takeaways you can have as a future teacher from this video. and love in their heart, and they can pick which one. To make a bully, you usually pick hate. To make a good person, you pick love. Hi, Camilla. Hi, Daddy. What do you know about bullying? A bully teases. Mm -hmm. A bully physically hurts people and does other things that aren't really nice. It could be emotional stuff, like hurting people's feelings. 
I think it's mostly like just somebody making other people feel bad about themselves. Do you know that I was bullied when I was a little girl? When I moved to my new town, I met a girl I thought was my friend, and she was nice to me at first. She came to school one day and said that she was having a birthday party and told the entire class that uh, I was only invited because her mother was making her invite the new girl. You know, I grew up with the name Kwakua Moody. It wasn't a name like Mike or Tim or Bill or whatever. So I used to get made fun of a lot, and it would make me feel really, really bad about my name. I used to want to change my name. Can I tell you something? Mm -hmm. When I was your age, in first grade, I was a bully. How does that make you feel to hear that? Well, I was going to expect you to say the opposite. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't the nicest kid. I was angry. My dad had just really left my life. And so I unfortunately took it out on other people. It was a really important lesson for me to learn that I need to treat other people the way that I want to be treated. And you're doing a very good job of doing that, so. If you could say something to a bully your age, what would you say? It's not cool to make people feel sad just because you feel that way. If you see a bully, you have to stand up to them and say, that was not nice. But isn't that sometimes scary? It might be, but you have to be brave. There's no other way around it, unless bullies are going to take over. Why do you think bullies act the way they do? Their home lives aren't very supportive. Their parents, they just don't have the opportunity to show the attention and love that this kid needs. Maybe they don't have any friends. They feel like they need to bully to be anything at all. Do you think that a bully deserves a little bit of sympathy sometimes? Definitely. They're not always mean because they just want to be. There usually is a situation behind that. I'm very proud that both of you are not only able to recognize or um, be kind to someone who's feeling bullied, but I'm even more proud of you for recognizing that the bully deserves kindness too. I think that, that makes me, <laughs> I mean, as a mother, I'm really proud of you. Every single person on this earth is different, but at the end of the day, it's that uniqueness that makes us really special. So it's never a thing to be made fun of. So what can we do to maybe help a bully find that love that you think is in everyone's heart? Just to give them someone to love. Remember, you lost someone that you loved. That's partly how you became a bully. Mm -hmm. And then your teacher respected you, and that was kind of love. So I think everybody needs someone to love or something to love. I think that's what it goes back to. You're making me cry because of how much I love you. And of it. I really love this video. It's so refreshing and so good to hear kids and parents talking together about this issue. I think it's something that we need to do more often and we need to make sure that we are doing as a community. So let's go ahead and go back to our presentation here. Hold on just one second. Um, we are going to look at or do a poll and I want to kind of get your opinion about the messages in this video and do you agree with the parents what the children said, particularly when it comes to like the bullying needs sympathy. If you agree 100%, 70%, 50%, what is your level of agreement? For me, it's definitely 100%. I just think it's a great message, the things that um, parents and kids are talking about, and I think we need to have more of that happen in homes and in schools. Okay, so let's listen to another example. This is from Kids Voices. Kind of, As you listen to this video, think about the impact bullying has on kids, specifically what can we do as future teachers to prevent bullying in your classroom. Let's go ahead and watch this video. And here we go. When I was in third grade, I was bullied about my weight. Bully is a person who hurts other people for their own pleasure and fun. 
have to get a kick out of it. It made me feel really sad. And it just made me feel like I was really unpretty. But I got over that and I realized that I don't care what other people say. I know I'm pretty. A bully is somebody who is always mean to somebody, who will hurt them with words and physical. Sometimes bullies start because they're rejected or something in the past or something bad happened to them in the past. They try to take it out on other people. A bully is someone who treats another person rudely, but it doesn't, it doesn't just happen for one day. It happens for a period of time. I think a bully is sort of anyone who makes fun of or excludes somebody because they're different or because they've done something that, like, would embarrass them. A bully is basically just a person who wants to take their anger out on other kids, I guess. Well, my story of bullying was very painful to go through. They called me very harsh, harsh names, and usually I just said something back to them and walked away. With bullying, I had friends that did stick up for me. I haven't been bullied, but people at school, I can tell, are getting bullied or are bullying each other, and it doesn't make me feel happy inside. Sometimes I have seen people like being by themselves or playing by themselves and I don't like when I say that so I try to play with them and so they don't feel lonely anymore. Okay, once again I really enjoy that video. I think it's a great example of what we can do to make sure kids are aware of these issues and kind of know of ways to address them. So let's go ahead and come back to our Nearpod presentation here. And I asked you what you can do as a future teacher to prevent bullying in your classroom. It's a pretty basic question, but a very powerful question. So what can you do or what have you seen done maybe in classrooms that you've been in to address this issue and prevent bullying? One of the things I think is really exciting is that we need to educate our students about bullying. And I'm going to go to an example here. And as we look at this example of how um, this education advocacy is happening in schools, I think it's really kind of timely that this comes up this week because National Pink Shirt Day is February 27th today. So if you're in schools today, hopefully you saw a lot of pink. What this is, it's basically a child was being bullied in school because he walked into school one day wearing a pink shirt, didn't think anything of it, but then started being bullied by other kids about that pink shirt. So some of the other kids in the school who are leaders and advocates really wanted to show their support of the student. So they organized for the whole school to come back later in the week wearing pink shirts. And I thought it was just an excellent example, of just something really simple but really powerful that kids can do. So as you reflect on this week, particularly in practice schools, did you see lots of pink? And what message do you think we're sending as educators when we look at this? So let me give you a little bit more information on this, an example of advocacy and practice. We're in action by watching this quick, quick little video. Please join me in welcoming Jeff Halsby from the Kingston Boys and Girls Club. And uh, hopefully you'll see a lot of people wearing pink tomorrow. It is National Pink Shirt Day. Good morning. You're already right. donning the, uh, the, the pink. Yep, the shoes is Zion. And it's called Choose Kindness. That's, yeah. the, that's the phrase that we'll be hearing a lot. Explain the uh, origins of Pink Shirt Day. Where it came from. Um, it actually started out east in a high school there. A uh, grade 9 boy, it was first day of school, um, showed up to school wearing a pink shirt, probably thought nothing of it. Um, a couple of the older boys started to sort of bully him, um, made him feel very uncomfortable. Um, but luckily, some of the other older, obviously, leaders in the school noticed this, um, wanted to put a stop to it. So they actually organized throughout the week. Um, I can't remember, it was later on in the week, but they organized the whole school actually showed up wearing pink mm. um, in support of this boy, um, and also to show um, the boys that were bullying him that it wasn't okay, and the school wasn't going to stand for it. And so the message was delivered, and that is uh, to stand up for bullying, and uh, even better, um, stop bullying, and hopefully end bullying. Absolutely. Yeah, and so this has been going on, the National Pink Shirt Day has been going on for a number of years. Yeah, nine or ten years now, I think. Uh, what's the spirit like at the Boys and Girls Club when this day rolls around? 
Um, it's really cool. All every Boys and Girls Club member gets a pink T-shirt, so um, we'll give them out tonight so they can wear them to school, um, wear them to the club. And it's, it's cool to see all of the kids across all of the Boys and Girls Clubs, um, sort of all all rocking their pink shirt. And we do pictures. There'll be pictures on our social media all day. Um, all through the month, we do anti-bullying programming. So we're teaching the kids um, sort of what to do in situations, how to handle situations. Um, to sort of see it all finish off on that day, and we do at West End, we have about 200 kids, so I'll do a big picture out there. Um, and just to see sort of the sea of pink is really overwhelming. I think uh, a definite day is needed uh, to get that discussion happening. Uh, choose kindness is something that I think we should do every day, no doubt. Yeah. Um, are you, what did the kids say though? Uh, have the lessons been learned? Do they understand why and also stepping up? I think they do. Um, plus, like our kids deal with stuff at school. They deal with it in their neighborhoods on sports teams, right. um, at Boys and Girls Club, and any other programs that they're in. Um, so the big thing is, I think, teaching them what to do if they're seeing something happening or if something's happening to them. Um, so there's always sort of three parts of this. So mm -hmm. there's the bully, the victim, the bystander. Um, we teach a lot about that bystander role. Uh, sometimes it's one victim and one bully. Um, there could be ten bystanders. So we don't want them supporting the problem. We want them to be able to stand up for someone. And we want them to be able to seek the right help. So find them involved at the basketball, on sports team, at music lessons, at the, at the club. Um, find someone that's willing to support them and be able to solve the problem with them. Um, so the victim and the bully can also sort out what's going on in their, their issues. You know, we're talking about kids, of course, but um, there are some adults that need that message as well. Yeah, I think it's a, a good lesson. It's great to see the community buy into things. Day. Um, maybe have kids, maybe you don't, maybe it's not an issue that you deal with all the time, um, but things happen all over the place, and then all ages. Yeah, I know uh, some work environments might be really good too. Absolutely. And, and uh, that message of choose kindness is universal, and it applies to all ages as well. Yeah. Uh, and the kids look forward to it. Yeah, they love it. Um, they're all, they all know today is the day they get their shirt, um, so that everyone's getting excited. Have the kids said much about uh, stepping up and being that bystander? Yeah, we do actually see, I've always noticed in February, we're, we're really talking about the issues. Um, kids are coming from the staff and saying, I noticed this, I didn't know what to do. Um, should I have said this? Should I do this? And so they're asking more questions about how they can help. A lot of parents we hear from saying, you know, their child is bullied at school. Are, what are the resources for the, for the families? Um, I think a big thing that comes up, a lot of kids aren't, aren't, they don't have that bystander or they're not speaking up for themselves. Um, so one of the things we teach the kids and then in turn teach the parents is the faster we can solve the problem, so if it's happening at Boys and Girls Club, come tell us right away so we can sit down and solve it. Um, with the parents, sometimes the message gets to them a couple days after. Right. We're trying to sort of tie it all together. And no figure child really wants to come forward and say that they are a victim. That's really hard. And one of the things we try and teach is uh, one of our staffs, is one of the, the bravest things you can do is to go up and say that to the staff. That is amazing. Jeff, thank you so much. And uh, again, um, you should be rocking some pink tomorrow as well. And it is a universal message, message to choose kindness. Thank you so much. Not a problem. Okay. We're going to give you a little bit of a break. Stay with us. The morning show continues by the news. Okay, again, I think this is another inspirational message, something we can really learn from, something we can take to heart. So I hope you do see a lot of pink today. This is a national pink shirt day, so hopefully in classes and schools across the country, we are seeing pink as one way to kind of advocate for the anti-bullying. So we're going to now take all the information that you've learned, everything we've kind of been talking about put together, and also the um, readings that were in your assigned course module for this week, and I want you to brainstorm ideas to promote anti-bullying. What would you do um, to first make people aware of what this issue is and then give some tips for not only teachers but students as well. And once you've kind of brainstormed these ideas, gotten some ideas together, I want you to go ahead and individually create a s'more poster or some sort of similar app to s'more where you can actually put together like an anti-bullying poster. Something that maybe you could use in your future classroom, your future school, something to be aware of. So how might you do this? Again, pull on all your resources when you're creating your anti-bullying poster. Um, S'more is a great app. I think you all learned about it in your tech class. So you should know how to use that app. Um, if not, think of another app that's similar to make your poster. For your anti-bullying poster, you, it must include some important statistics or facts. 
some teaching tips and then even some student tips. Like as they said in the video on the Boys and Girls Club, we need to teach our students that being the bravest thing to do is really to stand up and say something. Um, in the Kansas Safe Schools Resource Center that I provided you as your, one of your handouts, there are a ton of links and ideas there, so information you can pull from. So please be creative as you create your anti-bullying poster. I'm going to go through the posters, I'm going to pick the best one, and that person's actually going to get a little reward or a little prize. So please go ahead and make sure that you are picking um, information and facts that you think are very powerful and relevant when creating your poster. Use pictures, visuals, cues, anything like that as well. So um, that is the end of what we're going to be doing for this week. As you saw, kind of as you're watching the morning show about anti-bullying in schools and National Pink Shirt Day, a screen came up where there was like a video. That is the second video I was talking to you about in the email. It's where guest presenters came and talked to us. I'm going to go ahead and clip and put that video together for you. It is taking a lot longer than I thought it was, though. That video you saw come up took over the entire morning to process. So um, I will figure that out and upload a second link for you for that video so you can see what our guest presenters talked about. We had some wonderful people come from the Riley Police Department. One of them was an SRO, a school resource officer, who actually spends all his day in the Manhattan High School. He talked a lot about issues he's seen at the high school level, middle school, and even elementary school level. And then we had also Officer Pate who came and talked a little bit about her experiences and some key things when it comes to investigations of these issues of bullying. So I hope you enjoy that second video. It might take me another day to get that one up, but for now this video is here. Please make sure to create your poster. I'll put a Dropbox in there for you that in the assignments tab that says anti-bullying poster and just upload a picture of your poster when you have it completed. Keep up the great work you guys. I'm so excited to um, have this opportunity to work with you online. I think um, it's going really well. If you have any questions, suggestions, or recommendations, please let me know via email and I will talk to you guys soon. Thank you.